Hi, this week's weekly roundup is a little bit unusual because everyone was making a heck of a lot of noise in the house and I really couldn't record. So here I am out in the car. So first up on Kickstarter, there's this multi-protocol wireless box that can talk Sigfox, LoRaWAN and Scalp LTP. It contains an Atmega328P, which is the ultra low power variant, allowing it to drop down to 0.6 microamps in sleep or 5 milliamps in idle. They have written an Arduino library called PL Duino that allows you to interface to I2C sensors and their SAS platform. If you're running out of GPIOs on your Pi, then this mega expansion head has 8 10 amp 240 volt relays, 8 channel 12 bit ADC as well as 12 bit DAC. 8 opto isolated inputs, 4 open collector outputs rated to 16 volts, and an additional 6 GPIOs. Even better, you can stack 4 of them on a single Pi. And if you're into CNC machines, then here's another controller called the BuildBotics. Can control up to 4 steppers up to 6 amps at 36 volts, with 128 micro steps as well as limit switches, PWM, spindle control and Z-axis probing. There's all sorts of protection like over voltage, over current, short circuit and reverse voltage. It even has ethernet and four USB ports which allow you to connect up game controllers and webcams. So Boxmaster is a fairly simple board that is designed to be used in a DIY audio amplifier. Contains a 2.4 inch LCD, stereo in and out and graphic equalizer running off a Rome sound processor all powered from a 9 to 60 volt DC input. AutoPi is yet another OBD vehicle thingy, but this is one of the more mature ones. It's a board that contains CAN bus transceivers, 3G, 4G modem, GPS, accelerometer and speaker. It can attach to any Pi, but they have an all-in-one case supporting the Pi Zero. It runs Raspbian with their AutoPi Core software installed on top which will talk to their cloud platform, allowing you to do some cool stuff. The Stronghold is a board giving you remote control of up to five 47 amp DC outputs. It has an onboard Atmega 2560, a SIM 5320, giving you 3G and GPS, temperature sensor and surge protected RS-485. A nice little unit if you want 3G based remote control. Yep, thanks mate. So Cuboid is another STEM coding product. This one is Lego compatible and has a usual complement of blocks such as DC motor driver, LEDs, sound and touch, light and proximity sensors. It can be programmed over Bluetooth using an iOS or Android app using Scratch. So there's nothing on Indiegogo this week, but Crowd Supply has the Retro UC, which is an Arduino compatible board that's attempting to reincarnate some old CPUs in an FPGA. They're looking at providing CPUs such as the 6502, Z80 and 68K. They already have the FPGA source for the Z80 created for another board that was on Kickstarter a couple of years ago called the XLR8. This is an Arduino format board containing an Altera FPGA and the full complement of Arduino GPIOs that are 5 volt tolerant. Wiffy, wiffy, wiffy. The Hackaday Assistive Technologies competition has finished and there were 20 winners announced like hand tremor suppression, open source wheelchair and a device to avoid dehydration in the elderly. Great to see some really cool stuff being made. Arrow currently have on back order a Sensibly module which is a Bluetooth module and Cortex M4 MCU combo with the usual sensors on board such as 6 off IMU, light and pressure sensors. The good thing about this one is that it's the smallest I've seen so far. Just barely bigger than a coin cell battery. Inforce have a small SPC called the Inforce 6420. Based on the quad-core Snapdragon 600E, it also has 2 gigs DDR3 RAM, 4 gig eMMC, Wi-Fi Bluetooth, gigabit Ethernet, USB 2 HDMI out and HDMI in, running off a 5 volt, 4 amp DC power supply. Pretty decent board for the price. Intrinsic also have released their OpenQ 626 system on module. Measuring only 50 by 25 millimeters, it contains an octa-core Snapdragon 626, 2 gigs DDR3 RAM, 16 gig eMMC, Wi-Fi and GPS. It currently runs Android Lollipop and Linux is being worked on. 
it'll set you back around 140 US dollars for the module and 600 US dollars for the development breakout board. There seems to be a lot of ESP32 based boards hitting the market these days. Here's another one from a company called Thai Easy Elec. It's in a very similar format to DF Robots Fire Beetle or Adafruit's Feather. The LoRa Duino is a small board with an Atmega 328P, SX1278 LoRa module, 16 megabit flash, MCP73831 battery management, and AP2112 regulator. And you get all that for only $6 US. Nice. So Linux kernel version 4.13 is out, and there are a number of significant changes for makers. It includes support for a lot of ARM socks, like the Allwinners, Rockchips, and MediaTeks. This means that we'll be seeing more stable OS images on a lot of those cheap SPCs. Way back in weekly roundup number 15, I mentioned the Hi5. Well now Michael Welling has created the Low5, which contains the SI5 FE310, which is a 32-bit RISC MCU clocked at 320 MHz, 128 megabit flash, and 3.3 and 1.8 volt regulators, powered from 5 volts DC. All schematics and source are up there for everyone to see. Wifi, wifi, wifi. So there's a bunch of really cool things on Tinny this week. The Remotesy is a small PCB with an ESP8266 and IR transmitter and receiver. This is pretty useful if you want to automate all your old IR remotes. The default firmware connects to the Remotesy cloud servers where you can create controls and connect it to Alexa. Nice. In weekly roundup number 41, I mentioned the ESP8266 Frogo pin board. Well, the same Tindy store now has a version for the ESP32. The Pew Pew Lite is a simple board with six buttons and a four color eight by eight LED matrix display that fits onto an Adafruit feather and allowing you to create your own handheld console. This store always has some good ideas. This one simulates a coin cell battery from a five volt input via micro USB. A great idea if you want to do development on a board powered by coin cell and you don't want to have to buy a bucket load of coin cell batteries. Here's another GSM based relay board running an Atmega 328P and SIM 900 module allowing you to control over two 10 amp relays. You can use the default firmware or use the ICSP to load up your own. Now not many people would buy this next one but it's pretty interesting anyway. This guy has created a small MCU using only relays. Of course he has cut down the size considerably by using RAM chips, but the 83 relays form the core of the CPU. There's 1024 bytes of memory executing at a clock rate of 12 Hz, just fast enough to see things move. Nice. Yet another CAN bus board, this one uses the ESP32 and a TI CAN bus transceiver. It also has a regulator that can accept up to a 15 volt input, CP2102 USB to UART and SD slot. It has all the basics for doing vehicle telemetry. And yet another, but this one is based off an Orange Pi Zero and supports CAN bus version 2. So it can act as a CAN gateway over Wi-Fi or Ethernet or log data to a USB flash drive. These look like some pretty decent actuators. They're made from aluminium and ABS plastic and are IPX6 rated and also waterproof. They run off a 12 volt DC supply with a 4.4 pound push-pull force at 13 millimeters per second with a 150 millimeter stroke. This is a pretty simple board that provides a gateway between Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. It will receive BLE advertised data and send it to an MQTT server. Based on the TI-CC2640 and ESP8266, you can also OTA program it. Another HID injector slash hacking tool. This one has an Atmega 32U4 and ESP12S on board, allowing you to send keystrokes over Wi-Fi. Use it as a keyboard shortcut tool or just to annoy someone. Wifi, wifi, wifi. And over at Seed, they have even more ESP32 boards. The Wii Dora has all the usual stuff on board, like CP2102 USB to UART bridge and voltage regulators. And then there's the GeekNet ESP32 board, this one with additional LiPo battery management similar to the Feather. This flow breakout board is useful for drones, it contains a VL53LOX time of flight and PMW3901 optical flow sensor 
allowing you to measure X, Y and Z axis movement, powered from either 3.3 or 5 volts. We're starting to see a lot of 3G and 4G boards hitting the market, but they're still quite expensive at the moment. This one is a US only board running the Quicktel 4G LTE modem with onboard GPS. It also contains an STM32F405, 6 Grove connectors and audio jack. This next one is really cool and has changed my ideas on my video editing console that I'm making. It's a gesture control board using the MGC3130 chip that allows fairly accurate 3D tracking of objects. Resolution is up to 150 dpi at up to 150 millimeters away and talks ITC to your Pi. They have several different variants, the standalone case, the Pi hat, and also a Pi Zero hat. And here's yet another gesture sensor, this one from Adafruit, using the APDS9960 gesture sensor, accessible via ITC using 3.3 or 5 volt logic. SparkFun have the Red Bear Nano version 2, which is an update on their NRF52832 based board. It's pretty tiny too. I haven't really seen too many silicon cases for SBCs, but DF Robot have one for a Latte Panda. You can still get to all the connectors and even allows a fan to be installed. They also have a robotic hand built from five SG90 servos. Every digit can be controlled independently. This one is for righties, and this one is for lefties. DigiKey have a Dragonfly Cellular SOM, which is a bit expensive, but these are fairly rugged modules, with an ARM Cortex M4 allowing connectivity to 4G LTE, 3G HSPA, and 2G RTT. Wifi, wifi, wifi. And meanwhile, over in China, there's a module that allows you to copy 433 MHz RF remote controls and replay them using an iOS and Android app. Supports a bucket load of different devices. Amazing how these things are becoming really cheap. You can pick up five of these buck converters for around a dollar each. You'd never be able to make your own for cheaper. These ones convert a 24 volt DC input down to five volts at three amp load. Or you can pick up 10 of these TP4056 LiPo battery management breakouts for less than a dollar each. And this Wemos TT Go, which is an Arduino compatible board based on the ESP32, can be powered from up to 12 volts using the typical buck converter arrangement and also has onboard USB to UART bridge. If you want to hack around with watering your plants, then this kit from Elicro is pretty cheap. It's an Arduino shield with four relays, water pump, four valves and four soil moisture sensors. Meanwhile, IC Station have a fairly cheap GPS module based on the ATG M336H. Has a 2.5 meter accuracy, so it would be good for use cases where you want a rough sort of positioning. Seems to contain a super cap, which I gather keeps satellite info stored for a certain period of time. Access via plain old UART. So I finished my shopping and that about wraps it up for this week's weekly roundup. Um, I'd better go in and see if they've actually finished making all that noise in there. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Wifi, wifi, wifi.